Let's broaden it out now and bring in Keith Lerner. He is with Truist Advisory Services. He's Truist Wealth Chief Market Strategist and Managing Director of Portfolio and Market Strategy. Keith, it's always good to see you. Thanks for being here. You have been watching the rotation that's been going on sort of under the surface in the markets, although it feels like it has not been um, a sort of straight transition, right, and rotation. There have been a lot of kind of fits and starts here between the so-called reopening trade and the work from home trade that really was uh, in prominence last year. Where are we right now? And what's the next step in that rotation? Yeah, well, first, great to be with you, as always. Um, you're right. I mean, this year, we had a nice move up in the market uh, earlier on. And really, um, for the last two months, we've been in, in a trading range. And if you look at the headline index, it would seem like not, not a lot's going on, but we have seen this rotation. And what's interesting about this market is, you know, you got ahead of yourself and you can correct in time or price. We've been moving sideways, but again, on the, uh, below the surface, we've seen that strong rotation. And last week, we saw a strong uh, sell off in the value names. They were off, you know, five or 10% from their highs. You know, in our view, um, the value trade is still intact, um, it, it got overcrowded. It got overloved. It needs a hug, as Brian said in the last segment. But when we look at the fundamental drivers behind that trade, they're still intact. So the first thing is context. Yes, they had a big run this year, but they've trailed for about 14 years. So we have a long underperformance cycle. The second part is why did they underperform for so long? It's because we had really slow economic growth. And this year and next, we expect above-trend economic growth. And their earnings momentum and their earnings leverage for these areas are still positive. So what we told clients on last Friday during the sell-off was to step back into the value trade uh, as a whole. Handing out the hugs here on value stocks. I absolutely love it, Keith. Now, as, let me ask you this. As a, as a market strategist, do you care about the, the route underway in cryptocurrencies? And if you do... Do you think it's impacting the broader market here? You know, the way I look at that is more of a gauge of sentiment and liquidity as a whole. But, um, you know, as far as the overall market, it's funny. There's so much excitement and pockets of froth in the market. The overall S&P 500 has actually been much more fundamentally driven than people really realize. In fact, Brian, what I think what's really understated this year is the entire gains for the S&P 500 this year has been all earnings driven. In fact, all the gains since last June have been earnings driven. Earnings are actually being rivalized up much quicker uh, as a whole. Valuations are still expensive, but uh, at a PE now below 21, that's the lowest we've seen since last fall. So again, you got to pay attention to it, Brian. It tells you signs of where some of the excesses are, but it's not the main driver of the fundamentals for the broader market in our view. All right, there we see live pictures from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange Sprinkler ringing the opening bell on this Wednesday morning as we get another trading session underway here. Uh, muted open is set for the major averages. No uh, index was pointing to gains greater than 10 basis points at the open. So we're going to see uh, how things shake out as we get through today's trading session. Again, had that big rally on Monday to start the week. And then yesterday, all eyes were on the crypto trade. You know, Keith, you kind of mentioned something there that I've, I've written a little bit about, and I've had some interesting conversations on this idea of um, the, the market multiple actually coming in over the last few months. It's so, um, you know, everyone's so conditioned to say stocks are historically expensive. Stocks are historically expensive. What do you make of this dynamic where we've seen, you know, price appreciate a little bit. We are at a record high, but the multiples come down, I think, almost two or three turns based on where expectations have gone for 22 and 23. Do you think that the market might get even cheaper um, given the earnings cycle that, that we're expecting to come into? Yeah, and I think uh, first, I think part of this is that the valuations are still expensive by any historical uh, metric. So I think that's where uh, this is, you know, coming up quite a bit. But this is also somewhat normal. You know, the, the first move off of a low happens. It's it's mainly PE expansion, right? The market looking forward to the better earnings, and then in the second year of a bull market, and when you know there's this tug of war between the better economy and earnings and the Fed. You tend not to see multiple expansion and maybe a little bit of contraction. So, yeah, I suspect that you could see a little bit, a little bit more PE contraction, but I, I really think we're more in a, in a range and that the, the driver for the rest of this year will continue to be that earnings side. You know, it's, 
what's interesting, coming into this year, uh, the, the overall analyst community really underestimated the, the earnings power for the S&P. The numbers, uh, the S&P earnings for, for, for this year was, just, was expected to be 167 as of the end of December. That's up to almost 190. And I think part of that is, you know, we're in an environment that most analysts have not lived through. Most analysts have not lived through an environment where you saw 6 or 7% GDP growth. You'd have to go back decades. So I think it's just a hard thing for most to, to, to uh, model. And what I, what I suspect as far as the next driver to push us higher, even though it's at a more moderate pace, is those earning trends should continue to move up as we still expect pretty solid growth into next year. Yeah, Keith, we still have um, still seeing estimates, you know, for next year that range from two hundred dollars to two thirty two. So that gives you a sense of just how wide mm -hmm. that gap is. You know, finally, before we let you go, I just want to get your thoughts on what we heard from the Fed last week and sort of how you guys thought about that announcement and, and maybe what kind of questions you got from clients. Certainly inflation is top of mind. The rate cycle is top of mind. But is that too far out right now for you guys to change your view on on the stock market today? You know, it doesn't change our view because it was one of the things that we've been expecting as far as this tug of war. Again, you know, you go into the, the second year of a bull market, you, you look at the GDP, which is now at the end of this quarter, should be back above pre-pandemic levels. So this should be part of the conversation. I also think because the Fed has been such an important player in this market recovery that, you know, investors uh, are going to be even more sensitive to the past. But when you look as history is a guide, even though there's obviously some differences now, the first rate hike tends not to kill a bull market, but it injects volatility. And what we would suggest is that you use that volatility to, to uh, as an opportunity. For instance, as I mentioned, we talked about the value trade earlier this year, or just the last month, we actually increased reach for the first time in several years. So there's still opportunities. It's not going to just be as a broad, you know, everything's moving up together this year. Keith, good to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Keith Lerner of Truist. Appreciate it.